Welcome to News at 10 with me, Brendan LePaul. Prime Minister Datus Risma Sabri Yaakob has announced that the government agreed to form a special committee to investigate the death of fireman Muhammad Adib Muhammad Qasim. The committee will be given six months to carry out investigation on the matter. Elaborating further in a statement, the Premier said the committee would be chaired by Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Parliament and Law, Datu Sri Dr. Wan Junaidi Tuanku Jaffa, with Home Minister Datu Sri Hamza Zainuddin, Housing and Local Government Minister Datu Sri Rizal Marikan Nain Marikan, and Attorney General Tan Sri Idris Harun as its members. Datu Sri Ismail Sabri said the establishment of this committee is needed to ensure a thorough, transparent and proper investigation into the death of Muhammad Adib. He said the establishment of this special committee proves the government's commitment to ensuring that Muhammad Adib, who belong to the Emergency Medical Rescue Services of the Subang Jaya Fire and Rescue Station, gets justice and that those responsible for his death are brought to justice. Meanwhile, the Premier also announced the formation of two task forces which aim to examine the claims made by former Attorney General AG Tan Sri Tommy Thomas in his memoirs and to review Malaysia's legal options in relation to Pula Batipute, which was awarded to Singapore by the International Court of Justice ICJ in 2018. The first task force will conduct a preliminary study before any further action is taken against the allegations made by the former Attorney General in his book, My Story, Justice in the Wilderness. The task force will be chaired by a former Chief Justice who will be appointed in the near future, while the Legal Affairs Division and the Attorney General's Chambers, AGC, would be acting as the Secretariat. For the Pulau Batu Pute case, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri said the special task force will be established to conduct a comprehensive study as well as scrutinize and recommend appropriate options after seeking the views of international legal experts. This body will be chaired by former Attorney General Tan Sri Muhammad Apandi Ali. It is safe to permit interstate travel once the country achieves its 90% adult vaccination rate. Health Minister Kyrie Jamaluddin said the ministry viewed this target as sufficient to lift the interstate travel ban. He said as long as people strictly observe the standard operating procedures, SOP, Malaysia will be able to cut the spread of COVID-19. Saya harap uh, yang akan balik jumpa dengan uh, ibu bapa yang sudah berusia uh, tua uh, bolehlah melaksanakan tindakan-tindakan yang proaktif seperti membuat ujian kendiri dan sebagainya. Ya. Kita nak buka dengan selamat sebab itu reopening safely. Tapi kalau kita nak tunggu sampai 90% daripada populasi keseluruhan, kita akan tunggu lama sebab 20% daripada populasi kita bawah usia 12 tahun. Kyrie said this during a press conference after officiating the children's ward and launch the MRI machine as well as the ISO 9001-2015 certification at the Mawa Medical Center in Sramban today. He was commenting on the views from several health experts who believe that lifting the ban on interstate travel and relaxing more restrictions during the National Recovery Plan should only be done after 90% of the total population are fully immunized. The Johor state government has made preparations for adequate amenities for the public to help them adhere to COVID-19 standard operation procedures, SOP, at all public places once interstate travel is allowed. Menteri Besar Dato' Hasni Mohamad said that this includes all rest and recreation R&R service areas on the highways heading in and out of Johor. He said Johor recently received over 7 million face masks donated by Singapore that will be distributed to all members of the public aside from making hand sanitizers available at every public places. Supaya mereka yang nak merentas negeri ke Johor ni uh, sentiasa uh, mengamalkan uh, satu uh, penama um, pematuhan yang sebaik-baik mungkinlah ya uh, kepada SOP yang telah ditetapkan 
Dato Hasni said this when met by reporters after launching the state-level National Sports Day 2021 at Kota Iskanda today. He added that the process of the National COVID-19 Immunization Program for Teenagers in Johor has gone smoothly and is expected to reach its target before the end of October. Meanwhile, the people of Trangadu are advised to refrain from being complacent and continue to abide by the standard operating procedures as will be set once the state borders start to reopen. Menteri Besar Datu Sri Dr. Ahmad Shamsuri Mokta said it is not a ticket for the people to feel comfortable and take lightly the risks of COVID-19 infection. Dapat tidak itulah keadaan yang, yang kita semua kena hadapi dan saya rasa bukan saja kita di negeri ini tapi di seluruh negara akan berdepan dengan suasana yang sama kita melakukan persediaan minda, persediaan fizikal bagi uh, hidup dalam keadaan endemik iaitu uh, kita tidak dapat lari daripada uh, virus yang ada di sekeliling kita cuma kita harus ianya harus diuruskan yang penting ialah SOP. Datu Sri Dr. Ahmad Samsuri added that the vaccination rate for Trangganu adult population is currently around 85% and it is expected to reach 100% soon. He said this after launching the state-level National Sports Day 2021 at Wisma Darul Iman today. Similarly, in Kelantan, Kelantanese living outside the state are advised to undergo the COVID-19 screening tests, complete their vaccination and ensure that they are free from any symptoms before returning to their hometowns once interstate travel is allowed. Menteri Besar Dato Ahmad Yaakob said he understood that many of them longed to return to Kelantan after not being able to do so for a long time, but their parents' and family members' health is more important. Kalau bergejala maaf, tak sabar dia lagi lah. Relax dulu. Ha? So, tunggu dalam keadaan tidak bergejala, dapat dua dos dan kita ikut SOP. Itu penting SOP. Ha, kita kebimbangan ini, bila rentas akan diumum nanti insyaAllah apabila 90% peringkat kebangsaan uh, mendapat vaksin setelah diberi vaksin, maka dia sendiri dia akan beri rentas negeri lah. Jadi kita sangat mengingat-ingat kepada rakyat kita. He said this after launching the state-level National Sports Day at the Kelantan Youth and Sports Complex in Kota Baru. There are enough supply of COVID-19 self-test kits in the market. However, Deputy Minister of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, KBDN HGP, Dato Rosul Bahid said the demand for the kit is expected to rise drastically, especially after Belizeans encouraged to conduct the test before travelling to other states. According to Dato Rosol, currently there are about 6 million units of the self-test kit in the market. He said the kit can be bought in pharmacies, supermarkets and convenience stores. Menggunakan alat-alat ini bukan saja dijual di farmasi atau premis-premis perubatan, tapi kita mahu ianya dijual juga di supermarket, di convenience store dan juga tempat-tempat yang kita fikir lulus mengikut sasaran. Jadi ini adalah satu kemudahan kepada masyarakat, kepada anak sekolah dan kepada keluarga. The Deputy Minister also said that the government is considering a new controlled price on the COVID-19 self-test kits earlier than the expected date in December. He said discussions on the matter involving various stakeholders are underway, with the opening of the economic, tourism and education sectors in stages and relaxations of the standard operating procedures set under the National Recovery Plan. The COVID-19 self-test kits would become an essential item that would be part of the new normal. A total of 115,516 individuals, or about 67% of the 172,155 Orang Asli who are eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine, have been inoculated. Rural Development Minister Datu Sri Mahadze Khalid said the rest of them are expected to be vaccinated by the end of November. Dan ada lagi yang belum uh, mendapat vaksin ini adalah lebih kurang 56,000 lah. Jadi uh, kita sedang uh, berusaha dengan pelbagai pelbagai cara lah. Salah satu yang kita buat di peringkat kementerian ini adalah kita buat melalui outreach lah, iaitu 
kita pergi kita yang pergi cari uh, kita ada uh, melalui Mara kita ada bas Mara Liner yang uh, kita convert Mara Liner tu jadi semacam uh, macam PPV lah PPV bergerak ke kampung-kampung dan uh, ini usaha ni ada di di Perak di Pahang di Kelantan di mana terdapat ramai uh, masyarakat orang asli Dato Sri Marzi added that the use of the single dose consider vaccine would speed up the vaccination rates of the orang asli community Agencies urge to give refunds to Umrah pilgrims. Stay with us. The Science, Technology and Innovation Ministry, Mosti, has received 322 applications for the Malaysia Social Innovation, MySI, grant since January. This initiative offers 300,000 ringgit allocation to implement innovative local application projects. Minister Datu Sri Dr. Adam Barber said among the fields that will be given priority to receive this grant are energy, entrepreneurship, financial services, tourism, arts and culture. Manfaat yang diterima ini sama ada secara langsung atau tidak langsung telah membantu meningkatkan kesejahteraan masyarakat termasuklah mewujudkan peluang pekerjaan baru. Dato Sri Dr. Atam also revealed that since 2015, about 48 million ringgit were allocated for 234 innovative local application projects that have benefited about 100,000 beneficiaries. Travel agencies that offer Umrah packages have been urged to immediately return payments collected from customers who cannot perform Umrah last year following the enforcement of new standard operating procedures SOP for the minor pilgrimage issued by Saudi Arabia. Minister and the Prime Minister's Department, Religious Affairs, Senator Idris Ahmad, however, said refunds are not necessarily be paid in full, taking into account the management costs that had been paid by the travel agencies to third parties. Apabila pembatalan itu bukan sebab ibadah daripada dia Kalau jangkin ada beberapa persen-persen untuk pengurusan Dia memang sabar lah Tapi kalau nak, tak nak bagi terus itu tak, tak logik lah Tak baik lah Kerana kita nak buat benda baik kan Arifan balik lah kepada mereka yang tak pergi itu bukan kerana sebab Dia tak boleh, dia tak pergi itu batal-batal saya sendiri kan Ask on action against operators who refuse to refund their customers, Senator Idris said, the better, would be referred to the Tourism, Arts and Culture Ministry, MOTAC, and as issues related to tourism agencies fall under the purview of MOTAC. On the SOP for Muslims in the country to perform the Umrah pilgrimage, who said it would be announced soon. The level of public confidence in Tabung Haji TH is seen to be improving despite several issues of embezzlement being related with the Islamic financial institution. Deputy Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Religious Affairs, Dr. Ahmad Marzuk Shari, said this is following the increase of deposit made with over 9 million depositors using TH services as platform of Islamic investment as well as to manage their Hajj matters. merupakan pertambahan yang sangat uh, baik memberi uh, gambaran bahawa keyakinan mereka kepada agensi tabung haji ini sebagai institusi ulung yang menjaga bukan sahaja soal uh, persiapan untuk mengerjakan haji tetapi juga dia sebagai uh, salah satu daripada platform pelaburan kepada orang Islam dalam negara kita instrumen seperti tabung haji ini kita akan kekalkan Dia punya modus operandi dan kita akan tingkatkan dari segi daya saing pengurusan untuk lebih menjana keuntungan dan pulangan kepada pendeposit. At the same time, Dr. Ahmad Marzuk said the setting up of the Royal Commission of Inquiry to investigate issues connected to TH will not affect its operation. China vows peaceful reunification with Taiwan. 
That and more coming up in our foreign segment. Stay with us. But first, the number of Afghans attempting to cross the border to Iran has soared since the Taliban swept to power almost two months ago. But few make it across. The hike comes as devastating economic and humanitarian crisis lash Afghanistan, with the UN warning that a third of the population faces the threat of famine. Before the Taliban came to power on 15 August, around 1,000 to 2,000 people crossed to Iran through the Zaranj border station in the southwestern province of Nimruz every month. But the border commander for Nimruz province, Mohammad Hashim Hansale, said that the number of people attempting to cross has since soared to between 3,000 and 4,000 every day. He stated that very few had the papers required to cross. He said traders and people holding residence visas, as well as those with visas to seek medical treatment, are not prevented by Iranian forces, adding that about 500 to 600 people were allowed across each day. However, for those without papers attempting to cross, their experience can be harrowing, which some had been thwarted three times after trying to scale over the border wall. Chinese President Xi Jinping has vowed to realize peaceful reunification with Taiwan, though did not directly mention the use of force after a week of tensions with the Chinese claim island that sparked international concern. Taiwan responded shortly after by calling on Beijing to abandon its coercion, reiterating that only Taiwan's people could decide their future. Democratically, rule Taiwan has come under increased military and political pressure from Beijing to accept its sovereignty, but Taipei has pledged to defend their freedom. However, Xi said the Chinese people have a glorious tradition of opposing separatism. He said peaceful reunification best meets the overall interests of the Taiwanese people, but China will protect its sovereignty and unity. In a separate statement, Taiwan's China policy-making Mainland Affairs Council called on Beijing to abandon its provocative steps of intrusion, harassment and destruction and return to talks. Taiwan says it is an independent country called the Republic of China. After it was established in 1912 and its government fled to Taiwan in 1949 after losing a civil war with the communists who set up today's People's Republic. The leaders of India and Denmark have signed agreements to intensify their cooperation in fighting climate change ahead of a major climate change conference being held later this month. The agreements focus on the management of aquifers and groundwater resources for India's population of 1.4 billion people, as well as setting up a center to promote the use of natural refrigerants in tropical climates. Sports government outlines key plans for sports development. Stay with us. Prime Minister Dr. Sri Sabri Yaakov has outlined the path for sports development in the country by empowering women's participation, scouting new talents and making sports a new source of economic growth. The two action plans and talent identification program were developed by the Youth and Sports Ministry through the National Sports Vision 2030. When opening the National Sports Day celebration, the Prime Minister launched the Action Plan for Women in Sports, Talent Identification and Development Program, my TID, and formulation of the National Sports Industry Action Plan. The Action Plan of Women in Sports outlined the objectives, strategies and initiatives towards empowering the involvement of women in various fields of sports, towards making the development of national sports more inclusive and balance. As for the MITID program, it is expected to help expand the participation of new talents who have the potential at the grassroots level so that they can be identified earlier. Cara keseluruhan pelan tindakan wanita dalam sukan program talent identification and development dan pelan tindakan industri sukan negara merupakan sebahagian daripada hala tuju perancangan dan pembangunan sukan yang sedang dibentuk oleh KBS melalui Wisi Sukan Negara 2030. 
Meanwhile, in the National Sports Industry Action Plan, Youth and Sports Minister Dr. Sri Ahmad Faisal Azumu said it is aimed at making sports a new source of economic growth. He explained that it is needed considering that sports industry has the potential to provide great benefits for athletes and the nation. Maka kita tentulah memberi fokus juga kepada kebajikan atlet-atlet kita. Bukan saja kepada atlet yang telah bersara. Saya sentiasa menyarankan kepada atlet-atlet yang ternama sekarang ini adalah masa yang sesuai untuk mereka untuk monetize apa yang uh, keharuman nama mereka itu dengan uh, dengan apa nama uh, dengan satu jenama yang boleh membawa keuntungan kepada diri mereka dan juga kepada sukan yang mereka wakili. To the masses melalui tak baik tetapi melalui talent ID ini On another note, Dr. Sri Ahmad Faisal said the ministry is discussing with the finance ministry to help revitalize the sports sector and assist industry players who have been affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Saya harap uh, insyaAllah uh, kita dapat uh, cari jalan bagaimana untuk kita dapat bagi pengumuman uh, sebaik-baiknya dalam uh, belanjawan yang akan datang. Uh, tetapi uh, pihak Kementerian dan Kerajaan Malaysia sentiasa mengambil berat tentang bukan sahaja golongan seribu orang pengusaha fasiliti sukan ini yang agak terkesan teruk tetapi kepada semua perniagaan. For the record, throughout 2020, a total of 1,968 sport-related businesses had to cease their operations due to the lack of capital, unable to sustain business operation costs and other reasons. Following the launch of the 2021 National Sports Day by Prime Minister Dr. Sri Masabi Yaakob, state governments across the country held various activities for the celebration. They were conducted in line with the team towards a sporting nation while complying with the standard operating procedures SOPs. In Putrajaya, a total of 100 sports programs and activities were held in conjunction with the celebration. The Federal Territories Ministry also expressed its readiness to organize a large-scale sporting event after the number of daily COVID-19 cases reduces. It said it is part of the efforts in making the Federal Territories as the destination for sports. Meanwhile, over in Johor, the National Sports Day celebration was modest with all of the stipulated SOPs were complied with. The event, conducted using the hybrid concept, was officiated by Johor Menteri Besar Datuk Hasni Muhammad. It was participated by over 240,000 people and included various activities that promote healthy lifestyle. Malacca also held its own National Sports Day celebration at Dewan Japarun Serkam in Jasin. More than 25,000 people were estimated to join the programs, including cycling, kayaking, a fun walk, as well as other electronic sports. That concludes this evening's news at 10. In our top story, special committee to probe fireman Adib's death. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. But before we go, our English news desk is currently on the lookout for English news editors. Applicants are required to have a minimum bachelor's degree and below the age of 40. Interested applicants can send their resume to the email shown on your screen. Till then, I'm Brendan LePaul. Stay tuned to Southern Brita RTM and have a pleasant evening. Take care.